Bob, I wonder if we could talk a little bit about the, the flooding we saw in the Missouri River this year and specifically what some of the lessons we might draw from that experience. Well, I'm not sure uh, this is my opening <laughs> answer because I haven't seen all the details sure. of what uh, the Corps did during the, their release strategy. But for, you know, there's the largest amount of water flowing in the basin since, since 1898. So, you know, first of all, it, 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 it happens from time to time. You, you get an event that is much more difficult to manage. So uh, I think the, the Corps will probably have some, some lessons learned coming out of it, uh, particularly as it appears that, that they're, you know, struggling to sort of calculate the release. But we, you know, it's, with the weather, we may never have another one like it again, for all sure. I know. Uh, and my own uh, uh, view is, however, that <clears throat> we need some kind of public mechanism uh, that covers all states in the basin, all 10 states. Um, and it's what I'm going to be talking about, actually, in the lecture I'm going to deliver in about an hour, that some kind of a basin commission that's created in federal statute, uh, I would say either the governor or their appointee serving on it, making quality and quantity decisions that are binding uh, upon the core, upon the Bureau of Reclamation, uh, and uh, giving the public an opportunity to express not only their views, but to change the use of the river as our utilization needs change. Because sure. our, our utilization needs are much different today than they were in 1944 when Fix Sloan was enacted. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't been changed much over the years. Sure. Does that, um, w what you're describing here, um, is that, um, that would still be a federal, federally regulated process. I know some have talked <coughs> about this notion of a, of a compact among the states. Is that different from what you're describing? Uh, it's, it's somewhere in between, actually. There's, mm -hmm. there's a history of, of the effort to create a compact on the Missouri River. The first uh, person that I've, my limited research has um, uncovered is Senator Hugh Butler, mm -hmm. who was a senator from Nebraska in the uh, 40s and, and, and middle 50s. He, was chairman of the, uh, the Insular Committee, the Interior and Insular Committee. And he investigated the possibility of creating a compact. And he proposed, and, and I, I think he had it about right, <coughs> a commission that had binding authority. But it was a commission that if there was an adjudication or a litigation event, it would reside in the state, not the federal court. Uh, so it's, a, it's, it's much more than just the advisory compact that the states attempted to set up the Missouri Basin States Association where there wasn't much authority. It was a, you know, it was a dog with a bark and no teeth. Mm -hmm. And as a consequence, it sort of withered on the vine. So uh, clearly there's been a lot of criticism of the, the Corps of Engineers among mm -hmm. certainly politicians, mm -hmm. um, landowners, and so on. Um, w what I think I hear you saying is that it's a little too early to make those kinds of judgments that that, that a little more study needs to be done, is that right? Well, yes, I, I think a little more study does need to be done, but I also think that uh, it's, it's sort of the, uh, it, it demonstrates the problem that you're merely criticizing the core. There's no mechanism to mm -hmm. resolve uh, these conflicts, and there's real conflicts. Look, you, you know, they, they, you know, state like Montana, North and South Dakota, <clears throat> they're almost entirely in uh, semi-arid territory. And they're dealing with, sh with water shortages. Mm -hmm. uh, Eastern Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, uh, you know, we're dealing with too much. So the further south you go on the river, the more navigation and flood control becomes your dominant concern. Whereas the further north you go, what you're concerned about is irrigation and recreation. And you don't want to release too much water because otherwise sure. your, your lake levels go down and your fisheries are struggling. So there's, there's real conflict here that you've got to try to resolve. And I believe that the absence of a public body with real authority tends to produce at times dysfunctional at best and worse counterproductive just criticism of the core. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, we've got three weather events that do, do damage in, in Nebraska. You know, the tornado is a, uh, sure. in some ways a, the, the, the scariest one, but a blizzard and then mm -hmm. the, and floods. And it's ver quite instructive that the only one uh, where there's a criticism of the government for not doing something uh, differently is a, is a flood. Mm -hmm. you don't be, nobody ever says, gee, why didn't the government do more to stop that tornado or why didn't the government do much more to stop the flood? Sure. And it comes from, all this comes from my view, from the 1944 Flood Control Act. It's a federal law and there, there needs to be 
some modification of that to give the public more authority uh, to have uh, their voice heard mm -hmm. and uh, to, to in, in election campaigns. You almost never hear the Flood Control Act and when, when debates are going on about people running for office. Sure. Could you talk a little bit about, um, you know, some of the, the, the state of the river sort of in the, the lower the lower levels where I know there's been a lot of concern among environmentalists about damage to uh, water quality, um, habitat for wildlife, and I know there have been, I think over the years, some efforts maybe to address that, but there's this pretty significant sediment that gets stirred up. I mean, is that, do you see some, some uh, possibility in the future to see some of that uh, development uh, that addresses those concerns? Yes, I do, and it's not just environmentalists. It's uh, you know, people that have an interest in developing habitat for fishing sure. and, and for hunting. So, yeah, there actually is. The Corps has become one of the most important environmental restoration agencies in, in the country, uh, developing uh, what they call little beads of, of wetland restoration all along the Missouri, the entire 2,300 mile range. It's mostly in Missouri and Nebraska, mm -hmm. but it's pretty impressive, pretty mm -hmm. impressive restoration. The big challenge, I think, and if you can sort of imagine if you had 10 governors sitting on a, on a board, a Missouri River Commission, as Hugh Butler called it, you have 10 people sitting on that. The big challenge is answering the question, how much navigation do we really need? I mean, there was a time when you could make the case that you had to have that, uh, those barges because sure. the barges kept the railroads honest and, and, and got us better prices. Mm -hmm. Hard to make that case today. And there's a, the, 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 there's a uh, I think the, there's a real issue there as to whether or not uh, the navigation, particularly let's say from Sioux City to, to uh, St. Joe can really be, to Kansas City can be maintained. Mm -hmm. um, you know, by, under law, we, we, the Corps is obliged to maintain that, that channel right now. And there's very little, uh, the last time I checked, very little barge traffic moving from any longer from Sioux City to Kansas City. So that, that navigation, uh, effort, which began in the early part of the 20th century. That navigation effort uh, has, uh, I would say, done the most amount of damage to wildlife habitat. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a changing use in the, in the early 1900s, even in the 1940s. We didn't see it that way. Today, you know, fish and wildlife habitat is a very important part of our strategy to create tourism jobs in the, in the state. So it's, now you see not just the issue of endangered species, but habitat development as a way to develop your economy. That's something we didn't see in the early part of the 20th century. Not something we saw in the middle part of the 20th century. So it's an, it's an example of a changed attitude towards the river. Sure. Um, rivers, of course, will flood from time to time. That's what, what they'll do. I wonder if you could put what happened in, in 2011 in some sort of historical context in, in terms of the river's history. This has happened before, but how does this rank in terms of its impact, whether <coughs> economic or, or other impacts? Well, it's, it, it's a big flood. I mean, it was the, since they've been measuring in 1898, it's the most water that flowed into the basin during that entire period of time. Mm -hmm. So actually in terms of damage that occurred, loss of life included, uh, it's relatively minor in part because, not in part, because, and primarily because uh, we've got the storage capacity on the main stem. We now have six dams on the main stem, and you can store. We, we can store a whole year's worth of water. So it's, it's a lot easier to, to prevent the damage uh, as a consequence of those, those storage uh, facilities on, on the river. So it's nowhere near as bad as the 43 flood, the 1891 flood. I mean, those were, those were uh, floods have produced not only physical damage to property, but damage to human beings, loss of life. Sure. Okay. Just give me a moment here. And anything else? Uh, I guess, in particular, looking to the talk you'll be giving here in a little in a little bit. Um, any other points from that uh, lecture that you want to emphasize? Well, I, the, the the primary thing I would, <coughs> I would say is that. Uh, Pick Sloan is uh, one of the most important, least debated laws that have an impact on Nebraska. I mean, I'm prepared to argue that that legislation had a bigger impact on the economy and the society of Nebraska than any other federal law that's been enacted in the 20th century. Mm -hmm. Huge impact on the state. And so it's interesting that we hardly ever discuss it. Even in the flood, uh, the 2011 flood, it, it didn't provoke a debate about the Pick Sloan and should it be modified. It pr provoked instead uh, 
I mean, I have to give, give the flood some credit for in uniting Republicans and Democrats to do something together, uh, which was to write a letter to the General Accounting Office asking for an investigation in the court. Yet. So, it's, it, but the underlying law uh, is enormously important, and it, it, it needs, I think, more examination and, and more debate.